Hare Krishna. Inner enemies need to be given up, not killed. When a country is fighting a war against some enemies, usually either those enemies have to be defeated or they have to be killed. Now, spiritual life is often compared to a war within us. And in this war, the inner enemies are our own selfish desires such as lust, anger, greed. And these desires, they have to be fought against. The Bhagavad Gita repeatedly talks about how Jahi Shatrum Mahabaho Kama Rupam Durasadam. In 3.43, the Gita said, therefore, fight against the formidable enemy of lust and defeat it. Jahi Shatrum. At the same time, uh, later on, this is 3.43, later on in 16.22, Krishna talks about Tasmad e tatrayam tejet kame, he says, Trividham narkasyedam dwaram nashanam atmanaha kamaha krodha satha lobas Tasmad e tatrayam tejet. So he says, lust, anger, and greed are the three gates to hell. They destroy the soul and they need to be given up. So, <coughs> Mm, given up means that actually we can cons we can consider these outer enemies to be more like uh, to these inner enemies are not like outer enemies whom we can target and shoot and kill. Actually, they are present inside us, and they are present inside us because we want them there. Actually, we may say no, I don't want them there, but we have wanted them there in the earlier in the past, and even now we are not fully given up the desire for them. Sometimes we feel no, I don't want them. Sometimes we feel I want them. And because of these conflicting patterns of thought within us, we hold on to them ourselves. And because even if we have a little desire to hold on to them, they will stay there. So, just like if a, if a certain countries, they have something called as a, a declaring a person as a persona non grata. That means they say that you are a person who don't, you're not wanted in this country. You get out of this country. So now, if that person doesn't want to go out and one official says, oh, you have to get out. Another official says, no, you can stay. Another official says, oh, no, I'll arrange for everything for you. Just stay here. Another says, no, you have to get out and get out immediately. Now, with these conflicting signals coming from the government authorities, the person who is unwanted, who has been deemed as unwanted by one can always catch on to some other authority and stay on. But if the whole government speaks in one voice, you, know, you are unwanted, you have to be deported, then the person has no option except to leave. So like that, within us, there are different voices and these different voices speak in different tones. So because desires are, are basically uh, tangible things, but they are not things which you can kill in the literal sense of the word. Desires have to be given up. Desires get life when we contemplate on them and when we don't contemplate on them, we don't think of them, they become weak and they die. So, we, <clears throat> even if we say this is bad, I don't want to do this, this is terrible, this causes suffering, all these such thoughts can weaken the desire, but we cannot actually kill it. To dr we need to drive it out and for driving it out, we need to speak in one voice and give up whatever attachment we may have to that desire. Therefore, Krishna says by recognizing that they are dwaram nashinam atmana, they will destroy us spiritually. They are actually, <clears throat> they... <clears throat> Are actually they are trividham narkasyedam dwaram. They are doors to hell. But through all this, Krishna is helping us understand how dangerous they are. And <coughs> through it, Krishna says, "Give up." By this, we we can feel inspired to give them up. And the best way to give them up is to take up the process of bhakti whole enthusiast and wholeheartedly. By invoking Krishna's presence within us, we can drive out lower desires from our consciousness in the most efficacious way. Thank you. Hare Krishna.